In today's video, we're gonna be talking about one of the most surprisingly interesting tissues in the entire human body. I'm talking about the heart's wetsuit, the pericardium. This right here is an image of a real human heart, and there's a lot to look at. So what I wanna do is just kinda of quickly orient you so you understand exactly what's going on with this image. Now, luckily we have a couple things labeled here, so we can see like the ascending aorta is right here. We can see the superior vena cava, and then we can also see the pulmonary trunk, which is this right back here. So to give you a little bit more though, we have the ascending aorta as it turns into the aortic arch. We have the brachiocephalic artery, the left common carotid. Uh, you have the left subclavian artery. You have the right coronary artery. You have the left coronary artery. Like there's a lot to look at here. Um, the thing that I really wanna draw your attention to though, is this. You see this right here? This, this little like film of sorts is the pericardium. Now the pericardium is this fluid filled sac that almost entirely envelops the heart, but it doesn't completely envelop the heart. The, the analogy I love to give my students is it's kind of like a wetsuit, right? If you, so if you picture someone getting in a wetsuit, it doesn't cover the entirety of their body, right? They get, like, I mean, it does like 95% of their body, but it like, it doesn't cover the first, but it wouldn't <laughs> it make sense. Um, the heart has a very similar relationship with the pericardium where like if you see this right here this is that pulmonary trunk and then that ascending aorta if let's say you were a cardiac surgeon right so you're a heart surgeon and you were doing open heart surgery you can actually you know, place your finger you can slip it behind the pulmonary trunk and that ascending aorta and there's a gap between the anterior aspect of the pericardium pericardium and the posterior aspect of the pericardium like basically what's happening is you have these connective tissues and there's gonna, we're going to see that it's actually like three layers of connective tissue that are surrounding the heart, but there's kind of like this open space right in the middle. But it doesn't really matter because the heart is also going to be completely protected by the lungs. You can see like the left lung here, see the right lung over here. You can see the trachea, it has the sternum on the front side. Like the heart is very well protected. And the pericardium is very much surrounding the myocardium, right? The muscle of the heart, the cardiac muscle. And um, that's gonna be essential because I mean, the question we wanna ask is what on earth is this pericardium? Like, what is it for? And um, the easiest answer, and really I mean, the primary answer is to reduce friction. You see this, this organ beats about two and a half billion times over your lifetime. That's a lot of friction, right? I'm getting, look at all these surrounding structures. Like the lungs are being reflected back right now. So every heartbeat, just this, it's just rubbing against the tissues inside of your thoracic cavity. It only makes sense that you're gonna have this or some type of ability to reduce friction and that's exactly what the pericardium is. And see, this is multiple layers of connective tissue but if you look closely, the inside layer right here is all shiny. Right? Like imagine for a moment if we could pick that up and reflect it back onto the heart, the opposite side that we'd be looking at now would be dull. It's the same color, it just wouldn't be reflected. There'd be no shininess to it. And that's because on the outside of this, it's just pure, dense connective tissue. But the inside has what's called a serous membrane, which is still dense connective tissue, but it's secreting a very lubricating fluid called serous fluid. And the whole purpose of that is to just prevent the heart from, you know, just, I mean, look, the laws of physics are still a thing. The heart is going to be beating and rubbing. You, you got to have a way to reduce that friction. Otherwise, I mean, you're basically starting a fire, right? Like as soon as you get excited, I mean, you are in trouble with pericardium, right? So um, let's kind of like get a better understanding of what we're looking at here. So let's kind of, we're going to scan up here. By the way, we are looking at a 100% free article here on KenHub. We're going to go ahead and leave a link down in the description below. Feel free to follow along with me. So we're gonna go up to an even uh, different image up here. And um, this right here is the, per this is the pericardium. This is basically what we were looking at before, although now the pericardium is intact. Um, but you'll also notice that we have some probes peeling back the lungs, which allows us to be able to see the heart because the heart resides in the center of the body it resides in something called the mediastinum. And we're not gonna really dive into all the components of the mediastinum. There is a lot in there. Um, we will probably save that for a future video. So if you're interested, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Say, hey, I want, I want that video. I wanna understand more about the mediastinum and we'd be happy to break it down. But the pericardium 
is you can see that it's just on the outside. Now we can also see blood vessels. There's going to be nerves that are going to be going to this area, but I want to like bring your attention down here. You see this, the, the pericardium is blending with what's called the central tendon of the diaphragm. So the diaphragm is that dome shaped muscle that like resides on your liver. So what's been removed here is what we would see is the liver, the stomach would be right here, the spleen, uh, the pancreas is back here. The diaphragm is what separates the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity. And the pericardium blends directly into it, which means that every single time the diaphragm contracts, when the diaphragm contracts, it actually goes down. The heart sinks with it. Like, I want you to think about that, like a heart sinking feeling, like you're like, oh. you know what, it makes sense. I don't, I'm not 100% sure that's where they actually got, you know, the, the, the phrase of speech from, but hey, it makes sense in my head. Um, so, but you can see that the pericardium is also firmly anchoring the heart to the surrounding tissue, right? It's not just about, um, just about like, uh, you know, um, reducing friction. It's also going to be about like making sure the heart is not going anywhere. Can you imagine if like you did a cartwheel and the heart was not like, <laughs> was not firmly attached to it, just the heart's flipping and flopping all over the places. You're just like doing a couple of cart. You would only make a couple cartwheels before some serious internal trauma would have happened. But okay, so what I want to bring your attention to though here is like, again, this, this pericardium is coming up and this is where it ends, right? It's going to end as it's going up onto the ascending aorta, onto the pulmonary trunk. But what I want you to picture is that it's also kind of like closing off on the other side. Because like I said, it's actually like three layers. So you have like this outer fibrous membrane. Then you have an internal membrane that we call the parietal uh, pericardium. And then you're going to have another layer called the visceral pericardium. So you have fibrous pericardium, then you have parietal pericardium, and then you have, and then you have the visceral pericardium. It's like, there's three layers to this and it doesn't look like it. Look, look, let's go back. Let's go back down. Like looking at this, like, this is something I would always love when I was, you know, showing uh, students in the lab, they'd like, you'd feel this in your fingers and you'd be like, you're telling me, you're telling me that has three layers. It doesn't seem like it does. And well, I mean, because you're big <laughs> you know, you're big and you're not really able to perceive just how small these things can actually be um, but what's interesting is the visceral pericardium is actually considered also to be the epicardium it's the outer layer of the heart so basically this tough fibrous outer layer then you have this secondary layer layer called the parietal pericardium and then there's a gap so there's a gap in between them and then you would see the visceral pericardium, which is really the most superficial layer of the heart. So what we have here is though a space. There's a space that exists between the visceral pericardium and the parietal pericardium. And that is what's gonna be filled with fluid. And so again, the heart is beating two and a half billion times. It's just And you're gonna have you know, these membranes just kind of jostling back and forth, but there's a fluid barrier, right? You're using fluid dynamics to your advantage to, you know, prevent, you know, an, <laughs> too much friction in the area. It makes perfect sense. It makes absolutely perfect sense. So let's actually scroll back up here because what I want to show you now is like, just like you can see the pericardium on these different sides. So the image you're looking at here, let's get a get that a little more centered for you is you're looking at a right shoulder but the whole right upper limb has been removed um you can even see like the ribs here for example uh you know you can see the clavicle up here you can see more ribs um you can even see like the pleura you can see like the lung has been removed you can see blood vessels coming on the side and then you can see this pericardium right, so the pericardium it goes all the way to the back side but what you also have is so actually let's see if i can explain this a little bit better let's uh, let's look at it from yeah, which by the way, okay, I don't want to just skip over this. I want you to be able to see it. Um, this right here is just the left side. So we can see how the aorta is going down. So you can turn it, see it turning into, into the descending aorta. Um, yeah, you can see like pulmonary arteries, all that good stuff, pulmonary veins. But what I want you to imagine is this. So if you remember me saying fibrous pericardium, then you have the serous pericardium, which is really two layers, the parietal pericardium, and then the visceral pericardium. Well, here's the thing. The parietal and that visceral pericardium are really one layer. So this is <laughs> this is kind of wild what's happening. It when it, it goes up, and then when it gets to the top of the heart, they meet and they fuse together, and it creates, they call it, we call it a cul-de-sac. So I mean, like, think like 
I can just picture this, like the tissue comes up and then it meets the other layer and it completely closes off. So think like the cul-de-sac in just like a suburban neighborhood. You know, like you're driving down the street and then you look to your right or you look to your left and then there's just this circle, <laughs> you know, this cul-de-sac where you can go in and it just loops right back. So you could get in your car and you just go right back the other way. It's a cul-de-sac. That's exactly what is happening with the pericardium is it's gonna go up on the posterior side of the heart and then it's going to meet so the fi so the parietal pericardium is going to meet the visceral pericardium and then they close off and inside of there it may it keeps a contained environment for the fluid and so then that means again it's, I, this is why i think like a wetsuit is such a great analogy like if we go back to this just imagine it's basically looping back in on itself it's just like it's on your head right like it's like it left, leaves your head available <laughs> for watching I, I don't know it just I, I think it's i think it's a good analogy but um, the other thing though that's really interesting about this pericardium is because it's also going to be you know connecting to the connective tissue on the lungs now, this video really isn't about this but there's also connective tissue on the lungs called the pleura you have the parietal pleura you have the visceral pleura and these are going to be connecting with each other right the, the fibrous pericardium is going to be interacting with the visceral pleura of the lungs this is essential because i want you to think about this right every single time you breathe and those lungs are moving there's actually going to be force that is going to be traveling in towards the heart. And you really don't want that, right? Because the heart has its own specific function and that function is the beat. Lub dub, lub dub, lub dub, right? That's the purpose of the heart. And so um, you don't wanna have anything interfering with that or you want to minimize anything that's interfering with that because you could affect the flow of the fluid as it's inside. And so what will, um, or at least not the really the of the flow of the fluid, but you could, you could affect or impact how the heart beats itself, which would then have an impact on the fluid. Instead, what you want to do is try to actually funnel the force into the heart where it's not going to be as, you know, impactful. What I'm trying to say here is this, I want you to think about coughing, <coughs> right? You're coughing. When you do that, that forceful contraction, the diaphragm is moving aggressively. The lungs are just kind of like bouncing back and forth. That is going to have an impact on the heart. But what happens is the connective tissues from the lungs, as well as the central tendon of the diaphragm, is all going to be transmitted into the pericardium, which can then kind of help dissipate that force and also funnel it more into the ventricles or those hollow spaces of the heart, meaning that the, the, it's just not as hard on the heart itself. So the, the pericardium, Right, like I guess you could put it as like three functions. At least this is the way that I kind of teach it to my students. Is first and foremost, it's gonna it's going to reduce friction by lubricating the heart. Right, let's go back down to this image here, because you can see just that serous membrane in there. Right, that dense connective tissue that is just secreting a lubricating fluid. So you have this really dense piece of tissue secreting the fluid, reducing friction. All of that is awesome and necessary. The next thing it's going to do is just anchor the heart to the surrounding area, helping to keep it in place so that like, you know, you're jostling around. It's not going to be moving and flipping on flopping all over the place. And then the third function is it's also going to help dissipate forces. So they're not just like being traumatic to the heart muscle itself, because that can, that can be a problem, right? Like, I mean, like, you know, that like force on the heart muscle can actually have an impact on its function. So I, like the pericardium is surprisingly thin as it may be actually serves multiple different functions. And I think, I just think that's, I think that's really super interesting. And um, my hope is that you kind of agree with me, but um, you know, we really are enjoying making these types of videos. And so I'm curious if there, what else do you want to see us cover in these videos? Because there's so much to discuss in the human body. Um, and so what I want you to do is if you have an idea of what you want to see us cover in the future, go ahead and leave a comment down below. And while you're down there, might as well like this video. I mean, you, you, you should, should, I mean, it really helps these videos perform better in the all powerful, uh, YouTube algorithm. So please leave a like, but go ahead and leave a comment. And again, remember in the description below, you're going to see a, an actual link to this exact article. You can go check this out. This is a 100% free article here on Ken hub. While you're there, you can go ahead and explore everything else we have to offer. Um, I mean, we have quizzes, we, we have videos, we have an atlas. There's so much that Ken Hub has. So you might as well go ahead and peruse the platform while you are there. But um, I really appreciate you spending the time to hang out with me and learn something about pericardium. And uh, I will see you next time.